Pitster Pro is an American-based company with manufacturing in China that carries a bit of street cred for building a line of pretty decent race-oriented pit bikes. Back in 2008, Pitster Pro decided to apply their business model to building an ATV. They used a Honda TRX90 buildup for national racing as a baseline, and the results were the Pitster Pro FXR90, 125, and 150, which according to several magazine tests, are pretty impressive performers. Unfortunately, we have heard this before with the original Extreme Typhoon 125, which proved to be a poor design and extremely unreliable. To see if they live up to the hype, we decided to test Pitster Pro's FXR 125. This displacement has the largest number of available classes for youth racers and sets up a nice shootout between itself and the Raptor 125. The Pitster Pro is powered by a horizontal design 124cc air-cooled two-valve single overhead cam four-stroke engine. The engine features a 10.2 to 1 compression ratio and is nearly square, with a bore of 54.5 and a stroke of 53 millimeters. Harnessing the power is a close ratio four-speed transmission with a manual clutch. Air and fuel are fed to the engine by a 22 millimeter carburetor. Most race-oriented youth ATVs use completely exposed carburetor-mounted clamp-on filters. The FXR's filter is mounted in a trick-looking aluminum airbox. A Kickstarter turns the engine over with no electric start option. The Kickstarter has a long downward stroke, which we are told forces Pitster Pro to equip it with a hinged heel guard that must be flipped up in order to start the engine. This is a pain and probably why our dealer removed the heel guards prior to us picking up the ATV. Pitster needs an electric starter or to address the design of its Kickstarter to allow for the use of a more conventional heel guard. The Pitster Bros chassis is constructed of chromoly and looks pretty stout. The dual A-arm front end features camber and caster adjustments, something only found on a handful of stock 450cc models and most high-end aftermarket A-arms. The rear of the machine features a lightweight machined aluminum swing arm with a round housing style axle carrier, which makes chain adjustments a breeze. The chassis even features an anti-vibe steering stem. Piggyback reservoir-equipped GPX shocks reside at both ends. The shocks feature preload, compression, and rebound adjustments, and control 8 inches of wheel travel up front and 9 inches in the rear, offering class-leading suspension travel and adjustability. Hydraulic disc brakes front and rear slow the FXR125. The front brakes feature dual piston calipers, and the rear features a wave-style rotor which provides better cooling and brake pad clean-out. The rear brakes are operated with a uniquely designed reverse-facing foot pedal. The front brakes are operated using a right-side handlebar-mounted hand lever. Like Pitster Pro's pit bikes, the FXR comes with many race-ready features. Lightweight aluminum rims are wrapped in Carlisle Hole Shot style tires, 18 6 10 front and 18 6.58 rear. This wheel and tire setup has been very popular in motocross racing for years. A cross-country style aluminum front bumper, chassis skid plate, plus sprocket and rotor guards protect the chassis from trail obstacles. Additional safety, and to make the machine race legal, the FXR even comes equipped with nerf bars and a tether kill switch. Body styling on the FXR 125 is very similar to the Kawasaki KFX450R right down to the removable front and rear fenders. Its size is very comparable to the Raptor 125 and 250. Seat height is low at 29 inches, and its claimed curb weight is extremely light at 244 pounds. With an overall width of 45 inches and a wheelbase of 43 inches, the Pitster Pro's measurements look rock solid and stable. For its first rides, we took our Pitster Pro FXR 125 to Early One Indoor Motocross and a private outdoor test track located in northern Kentucky. Our testing crew consisted of three youth racers of various skill levels that could easily show the machine's strengths and expose any weaknesses. Flip the carburetor-mounted choke, kick the engine a few times, and it fires to life with a roar. The Pitster comes with a spark-arrested, free-flowing, competition-style exhaust, so you may have to be mindful of neighbors if you want to do some backyard riding in the city. The valves were a bit chattier than we are accustomed to, so we checked the valve clearances and everything looked good. After break-in, we've ran the engine mercilessly for a few hours with no valve train issues. For a stock 125, the engine's power is surprisingly good. 
Low end torque was impressively strong, which made takeoffs, climbing big hills, and gear selection much easier. It seemed that the larger the rider, the more they were impressed with the little 125's low end muscle. The FXR's mid range and top end continued to impress us. At early winds, our youth reachers were screaming the engine along the wall, trying to clear a section of short, widely spaced doubles. The power was even good enough that Chance Beverly became the first rider on a Mini to jump the finish line double, which was right out of a corner. While it may not be as fast as a fully modded national TRX-90 built to 125ccs with $2,500 worth of motor work, the FXR 125 engine feels pretty impressive. Clutch pull isn't the smoothest, however its action is light enough. The close ratio 4-speed transmission kept us upshifting quickly, however, unless we were trying to run at a race pace, the engine's strong low end torque made downshifts less important. Shifting was pretty smooth and predictable in either direction, but not having first gear at the bottom of the shifting pattern took some getting used to. On wide open straights, we often found ourselves screaming the engine in fourth gear looking for fifth. The stock engine could easily pull a rear sprocket with two less teeth, which would give the machine more top speed and spread the gear ratios out a bit. Handling on the 125 is very stable. The machine can be whipped into turns with little consideration for approach speed. On flat ground, the wheels do a decent job of going where they're pointed. However, we did notice some front end push on highly banked turns, unless our riders run aggressively, steering with the rear wheels. The Bidster is a predictable slider, thanks to its good tire selection, stable width, and strong engine performance. The A-arms were set up with full caster, which trades some steering precision for high-speed stability. Taking caster out of the front end should only help steering precision. The FXR 125's GPX shocks are more than a match for the stock engine. It feels like the machine has a ton of travel at both ends, which it does. We backed off the compression damping on the front shocks a few clicks. We then added another inch of preload to the rear shock, increased its compression damping four clicks, and back the rebound damping all the way out. Dialed in, both ends did a good job of resisting bottoming on our rider's more daring leaps. Jordan Trimble was pounding the machine mercilessly through two and a half foot deep loops in perfect control, as the shocks gobbled up each impact. In spite of their big impact prowess, the shocks still allowed the machine to float over small bumps in the trail. Unlike most mini ATVs, you could easily race with the FXR's stock suspension. In spite of having bled the front brakes several times, we couldn't get a positive feeling out of them. They slowed the machine well, but felt soft. The rear brake offered good power, decent feel, and could lock the rear end up easily for brake slides. The relationship between the seat and pegs felt shorter than a full-size machine. The relationship between the pegs and handlebars, however, felt comparable to a full-size quad. This allowed the machine to fit a wide variety of rider sizes, but everyone agreed that the pegs felt a bit too far forward. Some small details, such as the grips, airbox, and handguards were nice. Others, such as the cheap peeling levers, strange heel guard design, and less than perfect ergonomics, left us feeling that the machine could still use a bit of refinement. After two hours of testing, nothing is broken, although we had to tighten a number of bolts that should have received Loctite at the factory. Initial quality seems decent, and this is by far the best machine that we've seen on the market come out of a Chinese factory. If you're considering purchasing one, we'd recommend making sure that you're working with a reputable dealership willing to take the time to go through the machine and set it up. The Vinster Pro FXR 125 offers a ton of performance for the money at $3,099 and is the only raceable 125 four-stroke machine on the market that we are aware of. Only time will tell if it's reliable, but so far, so good. For more information on the Pitster Pro FXR 125 or their full line of FXR ATVs and accessories, log on to pitsterpro.com.